This video is all about using Decipher Text Message to do deleted message recovery. We're going to use Decipher Text Message uh, to do the deleted message recovery, and then afterwards we're going to talk a little bit about how the deleted message recovery works in case you don't see your messages or you're just curious uh, so that you get a little bit more information. Uh, you'll notice that I'm actually on a Mac right now. I'm going to splice in videos of doing the same thing on Windows so that everybody knows uh, how to do what they want to be doing. When I launch the program, what I'm going to see first is this list of the backup files that were actually loaded by the program. So if I expand this window a little bit, you'll see some information uh, about the program. Right now I'm using the trial version. Uh, it will also tell you where the backup files created by iTunes actually are. And then in addition, it will show you some information about the backup files that were actually loaded. You'll notice that I didn't talk yet about making any backup files. And the reason I like to run the program first before I make any new backup files is there's a chance that during the regular syncing of your phone, iTunes actually made a recent backup of your phone. So the messages that you're hoping to search for might actually be in one of these backup files. So when I'm doing deleted message recovery, I actually like to run the program once, collect all the information out of the existing backups, uh, and then we'll start doing another backup. And I'll actually show you how to take one of these backup files and sort of hide it from iTunes so that the next time you make a backup, you don't erase the previous backup. Uh, I'm sort of doing the long and drawn out process of doing deleted message recovery so that we have the most chance of finding your messages. On the left hand side of the window, you'll see a listing of all of the devices uh, that Decipher Text Message has read information for. From here, you'll see that we actually have three backups, and two of them are from this Kelly's iPhone. Uh, and what happens in Decipher Text Message is we actually merge multiple backups uh, into one listing on this left hand side. So even though I have three backups and I only see two phones, that's okay. When I click on this one, I'm actually sort of referencing the information from both of these first and third backups. If I'm trying to find missing messages, the first thing I might look at uh, is the dates of these backups. So let's pretend I'm working with Kelly's iPhone. I would see I have a backup from March 23rd and a much older backup from October 25th of the previous year. Now it's time for you to do a little bit of sleuthing and thinking. If either of these backups uh, actually are after the messages were sent and put on your phone, but before you deleted them, the good news is they're probably just listed uh, in this main listing of messages. And I would go through at that point and, and go look for it. But let's pretend that it, they're not, uh, that we, we think it might actually have the information after the message was deleted. Uh, in which case I would want to press this recover button. And what would happen from here, I'm going to see this big deleted messages. Uh, window. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger because I have a very big list here. And I'm using the trial version of the program. So you see that under here I see this big listing to see the actual contents. You have to upgrade to the full version. But I can take a look here and see that I have information about who the messages that were deleted were with, whether they were sent or received, and the date that the messages uh, were sent back and forth. This is to give you some idea of whether the messages you're looking for might be in the, in the backup to be recovered before you actually buy the program. Uh, I seem to have a message deleted that's recoverable that is from well before uh, there were iPhones to have messages, which seems a little bit impossible. There might actually be incomplete data uh, that we're trying to recover, which might mean some of the information is a little bit mangled. Uh, likewise, when we actually upgrade to the full version, we may see that there are messages in here that are actually duplicates of real messages with a little bit of gobbledygook at the end, and that's the same thing going on that uh, a little bit of it got mangled. Okay, let's say that we recognize that uh, the message should be in the more recent backup. We need to make a new backup. And if you know that the information you're looking for isn't in any of these backups, you can just go ahead and make a new backup in iTunes and not worry about uh, overriding the old backup. But for the sake of completeness, what I'm going to do right now is talk about how to hide one of your backups from iTunes so that it stays around uh, even after 
uh, a new backup is made. So if we take a look at this backup loaded window, we can see the location of the iTunes backups folders, and we can see which folders correspond to which backups. So on my Mac, I see that it's in my user home directory, so I'm going to go there in Finder. So I'm going to open Finder, and I'm clicking on Home, uh, and if I'm running Snow Leopard or Leopard, you can see the library folder right here uh, within Finder once you click on the little home place. So we go to Library, Application Support, Mobile Sync, and then Backup, and you'll notice that I have you know, a gobbledygook of hidden backups because I developed this software and I have lots of test cases. So you won't see all this crazy gobbledygook around this, but you will see in your backup folder different folders for your different iOS backups. So assuming you have just one, you know exactly which folder you are going to need to work with. Uh, if you have more than one, you're going to want to reference this backups loaded window so you can kind of correlate these crazy unique identifier names uh, with the backup that you want, that you're interested in. So I'm going to say I want to make sure that I keep around this specific backup of my iPhone 4S, which I know is named OED1D2. iTunes basically keeps track of these backup folders and overwrites them by keeping track of these unique identifier names. So if I rename this folder to backup I want to keep from 322, now it's essentially hidden from iTunes. So the next time we make a backup in iTunes, it will remake this OED1 blah 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 folder. Uh, and my backup I want to keep 322 is safe. On Windows, in order to get to your backup location, you can look in this smaller backups loaded window. And what you're going to want to do is select this location looking for backups in starting with C colon backslash and ending in backup, uh, and you want to copy it. I like to do that by right clicking and then selecting copy. And then you want to open Internet Explorer. And what I'm going to do is paste that location right into the Internet Explorer bar and press enter. And what will pop up is a small file explorer window opened up to your backup uh, folder location. And in the same way, you can use that backups loaded window to correlate these long folder names to the different backups. All right, so we've done that. So let's go ahead and close this window. And now we're going to go into iTunes. So now to force a backup, we're not going to do a sync, uh, which you might be more used to doing because a sync doesn't always create a backup. We're going to right click on this phone uh, under the little devices list in iTunes. Uh, if you're using a Mac with only one mouse button, you can control click to do the right click. Uh, and then I'm going to select backup. And now it will actually run a backup of my iPhone 4S and that iTunes has remade this OED1 blah 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 folder uh, containing all the new backup information and it's still going. Once the backup is complete, uh, we can actually shut down Decipher Text Message. Decipher Text Message again. And now it will actually run and pull in more backups. And if I open this up so we can see a little bit more, we'll see that it actually loads uh, four backups. So we can see that it actually has four backups now, uh, including the one I want to keep, 322, and my newest backup that was created. Uh, and they're still all merged together underneath this one uh, device. And if I click the Recover button, I may see even more possibilities because when I click that recover button it's going to go look at all of the backup files that are still uh, read in here uh, that are associated with that device. Okay, so now let's assume I may have found something that I actually like under this deleted messages window uh, and I, I bought the program. So I would click the register button, have my little demo code that you would have gotten in your email and I can paste it in here and click register and it will say it needs to relaunch to start the full version so we'll relaunch and now when I click recover uh, what I'll actually see is a lot of entries uh, of all of these deleted messages and I can see the entire deleted text uh, and I'm gonna make this a little bit here so we see a shorter list 
so I don't have to read them all really quickly and make sure that they're good to post on YouTube. Uh, you'll notice that one of those listings that we said looked kind of like gobbledygook actually looks like gobbledygook in its entirety now. So I may see messages that are actually ones that I want to recover. And really by recover here, what we're doing is taking these and adding to them to the main part of Decipher Text Message so that the program saves them and has them in your history from now moving forward. Let's just select them all. I know that there's some that are gobbledygook, but that'll make them easy to find, I guess. Uh, and what we can do is once we've had them all checked, we say we want to save all of the selected ones to the main part of Decipher Text Message. It doesn't really look like anything happened, uh, but if I scroll down a little bit, past the names and into the numbers, we'll even see that one gobbledygook uh, 480280 gobbledygook message added in to the existing history uh, of Decipher Text Message. So now it's, it's basically merged into this log for each of your contacts. Uh, and that's what it means by saving uh, to Decipher Text Message. And now whenever you close the program and load it back up, it will be part of that recurring history. All right, so that is the how to use Decipher Text Message uh, to look for deleted messages. Now we can talk a little bit about what happens when you delete messages and why are they recoverable sometimes and not others. And unfortunately, the big answer is, you know, it depends. So what I have here is the database file that the SMS app on your phone actually writes all of the messages that are sent and received from your phone into. Uh, so I will not expand phone numbers here so that people I text with don't get too upset with me. But what I'm looking at here is a big database uh, of the information about the sender of different text messages, the date that they were sent, the actual text, and things like that. So what happens on your phone when you delete one of these messages is that one of these rows gets deleted from the database. And it just happens to be the way that these SQLite databases work. When a row gets deleted, uh, kind of the same way when a file gets deleted off your hard drive, no one goes through and erases this row and replaces, you know, writes over it with a bunch of zeros or anything like that. Uh, what happens instead is the row is just sort of marked I'm not using it anymore. So if we try to go look at this database as a real database like this, this row would no longer show up uh, in the listings in the database. But if we went and looked at this same file as a flat text file, uh, and right here I'm linking to an article that talks about how to do this from within the video, uh, what we'd see is that space for this row uh, might still be sitting there. Uh, and as long as enough of that information for that row is still sitting there, we actually pour through the entire contents of the file, not just the stuff that's still formatted as rows in use, uh, to try to find messages that used to exist and are now just sitting there as sort of space to be reused. And a lot of times people email us and they're a little bit frustrated because there's no real rhyme or reason in reality about how the space is reused. Uh, if you delete enough messages, the database is actually going to kind of clean itself up and reorganize so it takes less space and you may actually not have anything that's recoverable. So what we like to advise people, uh, you know, if Decipher Text Message doesn't find your message, use the article that we're linking to within this video to go look at the flat text file and, you know, search for the phone number of the person, a part of the message, uh, so that you can kind of look into the, pour through the whole contents to see if any kind of remnants of the message is still there. Because what we need in the program uh, is enough of the information about that old row to sort of reconstruct the full, this was a text message kind of information. But you as a human being might be happy with, you know, just enough of the words to get the information that you needed to get out of it. Uh, so you need less information than the program does to see a coherent picture of your deleted message. Uh, so I hope this helped explain a little bit about how the deleted message recovery works. As always, if you have any questions for us, you can always go to our website, deciphertools.com, uh, and under support, there is a form to fill out that you can contact us at any time, 
and we'll get back to you as quickly as we can. Thanks.